Welcome to a somewhat belated uh, Bruckner 200 video. Um, as I said in the previous one, October is quite a lean month looking at uh, commencement of works, completions of works and first performances. But on the 26th of October in 1873 was the first performance of Bruckner's Second Symphony. Only two days ago I basically got a gentle reminder as this very symphony came on the radio and usually in the morning and I thought surely they're not going to play the entire symphony which is just over an hour in length and sure enough they did and I thought this is reflecting the nature of this reality that it is totally interactive so in a way you could say that Anton Bruckner was giving me a gentle reminder that I need to make another video in the series um, celebrating Bruckner's 200th anniversary, which is next year. The painting is an untitled piece by Sophie Gervais from Canada. So that is your visual for this video. So Symphony Number no. 2 in C minor, sometimes known as the Symphony of Pauses, was completed in 1872. It was actually the fourth symphony composed by Bruckner, the previous three being the Symphony in F minor of 1863, the Symphony No. 1 in C minor of 1866, and the Symphony in D minor of 1869, which has become known as Die Nelta. In the fall of 1871, after having become, become established in Vienna, Anton Bruckner embarked on a new symphonic project, his fourth, which in less than a year would result in a, a completed and copied score of nearly 2,000 bars. The Symphony No. 2, which was mostly written in the summer of 1872, represents a breakthrough in Bruckner's conception of the symphony. Although Bruckner had been composing sonata form movements with three distinct themes since he began writing symphonies in 1862, in 1872 he greatly expanded the scope of their presentation and development and established the framework which he would use consistently in all his subsequent symphonic work. Moreover, the adagio of the symphony is in A, B, A, BA lead form, followed by a coda, the framework which Bruckner would use in his subsequent symphonic works, with the exception of Symphony No. 6. The second symphony is the only numbered symphony uh, that Bruckner did not dedicate. Uh, the intention was to de dedicate it to Franz Liszt, um, partly because, as is said of Bruckner's personality, Liszt sort of seemed to recoil on in horror and left early one morning when they were staying, at, I believe it was at, at Bayreuth, which deeply affected Bruckner. But you can find in the playlist, and I'll put the link in the description, List did, does make a piano tr transcription of the Symphony No. 2 Adagio, and it's a beautiful piece of music. Just my personal opinion, but um, certainly worth hearing. Uh, where are we? Uh, I've lost my place now in my notes. Anyway, the symphony was premiered on the 26th of October 1873 by the Vienna Philharmonic with Bruckner himself on the podium and it didn't go particularly well. Bruckner, from all the uh, stories and the accounts, doesn't seem to be a particularly confident conductor. When it comes to choral works, it's almost like he's a different person. But uh, conducting an orchestra, maybe it's the nervousness of the experience. Who knows? It's something he didn't seem to really overcome in his life. But this Symphony Number no. 2 certainly sets the framework for his later creations. It is just prior to his uh, indiscretion of dedicating the third symphony to Wagner, so he hadn't uh, encountered the wrath of the Viennese music critic Ed Edward Hanslick at the time. 
But this reality is very much a world of reflection and Bruckner, as Bruckner the man, works very much within set frameworks. And this almost seems to be reflected in the mentality of this music critic who would not accept how music is forever changing and was very rigid in his views. It's almost like a the universe is reflecting to Bruckner a sort of gentle reminder to be maybe a little be a little bit more adventurous, like he was as Bruckner the the artist, the creative artist. Because certainly his music was not written for the time, it was very little understood, but fortunately now just look at the number of commercial recordings that are available the number of symphony cycles that have been recorded by various orchestras and conductors. So I will put a link in the description for the Naxos recording, which was edited by William Carahan. It's probably the closest you're going to get to the original 1872 version of the symphony. Most of the recorded symphonies are either in the 1877 revision or the later 1892. Another video to come soon. I hope you have enjoyed this and enjoyed the visual feast of a beautiful picture by Sophie Gervais. Thank you very much for listening.